Hello everybody, my name is Mark Reed from the Reef Authority and I'm here to deliver this week's Reef Health Update. Aerial surveys to determine the extent of coral bleaching across the vast Great Barrier Reef have now been completed. The team from the Reef Authority and the Australian Institute of Marine Science looked at reefs from the southern boundary of the Marine Park, offshore Bundaberg, all the way up to and including reefs in the Torres Strait. The team assessed just over a thousand reefs and what we saw is that the pattern of bleaching is consistent with the pattern of heat exposure over the summer months. The surveys covered 836 reefs in the Marine Park and 244 reefs in the Torres Straits. We're pleased to report that the majority of coral reefs that we assessed in the Torres Straits had little to no bleaching. Within the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, a quarter of the reefs that we assessed had little to no bleaching. This included reefs in the far north, in the outer reef area north of Port Douglas and those reefs north of Lizard Island where generally bleaching was much less than in other areas of the reef. Bleaching was recorded on three quarters of the reefs in the marine park. Half of those reefs exhibited high to very high levels of bleaching whereas 10% of those exhibited extreme bleaching. Very high bleaching was prevalent in many of the inshore reefs in the central region of the marine park. A number of mid-shelf reefs from Innisfail to Cape Melville including areas around Lizard Island, were affected by very high to extreme levels of bleaching. High to extreme levels of bleaching were recorded in many of the offshore and inshore reefs in the Southern Great Barrier Reef. Aerial surveys are a crucial tool to measure the extent of coral bleaching across the vast area of the Great Barrier Reef. Aerial surveys clearly capture the coral reef's response to heat stress. What we now need to do is combine the results of the aerial survey with in-water surveys to get a better and more complete picture of the bleaching event. In-water surveys will give us better information about the colony response to the heat stress, particularly how it's affecting different types of corals across different habitats and at different depths. In-water surveys are critical to quantify coral mortality due to the bleaching event and heat stress over the coming months. These assessments help us to understand the overall impact and the severity of this event on the coral reef ecosystem. In-water surveys are ongoing, with critical information being provided by our extended observer network. This includes the Australian Institute of Marine Science, our Crown of Thorns Starfish Control Program and our Tourism Reef Protection Initiative. The Reef Authority, in collaboration with our science partners, the CSIRO and the Australian Institute of Marine Science, will soon release the Reef Health Snapshot. The snapshot will provide a summary of conditions experienced over the high risk summer period, including the impacts of elevated sea surface temperatures, tropical cyclones and flooding. While global action on climate change is essential, the Reef Authority is focused on long term protection and management of the Great Barrier Reef to reduce pressures. This includes over the high risk summer period like we're experiencing now. We're continuing to target our management actions to ensure that any additional stress to the reef is minimised at this particular time. Thanks for tuning in and we'll look forward to seeing you when we present next week's Reef Health Update.